Are you in the military and trying to find out how to maintain muscle, build muscle, or gain more strength while you're training with the military? Watch this. Our next caller is Alexis from New Jersey. Hey, Alexis. What's happening? How can we help you? Hey, guys. How are you? Good. Good. I just want to thank you so much for all of the advice you put out, especially helping me, a college student, navigate the fitness world. It's very helpful. Um, so just to start off, um, I am in college. I'm also in Air Force ROTC, which is basically a program that allows university students to commission as officers in the Air Force. And with that, we do have physical training requirements to follow. Um, so the fitness test is one and a half mile run along with push-ups and sit-ups. And throughout the years, I've been able to follow MAPS, Powerlift, Aesthetic, and now Strong while only running like a mile and a half each week to make sure that I can still perform very well on the assessment. But uh, this semester, they're changing the requirements and I will be, I will have to attend two in-person training sessions, which is 20 minutes of running, 20 minutes of calisthenics, and um, 20 minutes of like a um, warm up and cool down. So that's twice a week, in addition to working out on my own and those workouts on my own, I have to run at least a mile um, alone. So my main goal though, for this year or the next several years, however long it takes, is to be able to squat 200 pounds beltless for six sets and four reps. And I can currently do that with 155 pounds. And the reason why it's so specific is because I'm currently running MAP Strong, the third phase. I've been in it quite a while. So I'm kind of happy with that rep range and that, those amount of sets. So that's why I have that goal so specific. Um, but basically my major question is how would I transition from MAP Strong into a different program while still accounting for these new PT requirements and still being able to achieve my goal of squatting the 200 pounds. Oh, yeah. Is the, the, the PT requirements, did, let me make sure I got this right. You, it's a, for now on, you're going to have two times a week consistently for an hour that you have to follow their routine, or is this just a test or one time you have to go do that? It's uh, going to be from here on out. Okay. Yeah. You know what? Here, do this, Alexis. Follow MAPS Anabolic. Do two foundational workouts a week, and then do the other two workouts are the ones that you're doing with your with your with your group. That you should see some good strength gains transitioning that way. It's less volume, but you're also doing the other workouts with everybody. So in MAPS Anabolic, there's an option to do two foundational workouts a week. I would follow that along with what you're doing. And I bet you you would see some strength gains uh, doing that. I see. My main, my other concern is that I don't think that these PT sessions are going to be as intense because they're like made to fit the average like college student, and like I often find them not challenging because I did them in the past, like the optional ones. So I don't know. Like, will that even though I'll significantly decrease the volume and these new exercises aren't really that challenging. Like, will that kind of hinder any progress because I'm so used to training more and like lifting heavier? Maybe, but usually not. Usually the reduction in volume is what people need, but try it out. I would say try out what I just said. If you don't see some good strength gains within the first three weeks and you feel like, oh, I'm not doing enough, Try adding a third foundational workout. Yeah, that's a, a perfect way to measure this. Just start yeah. off low. Be be honest with yourself. Be consistently tracking for three weeks, making sure you're you're either staying strong or getting stronger. And if you're not, you can try adding a day. I would just be worried about adding the third day because it doesn't feel like you're being challenged weight wise, but you're still training for an hour. Yeah, right. It's a lot of activity that it will accumulate. And I, I would think too, like so. Besides those those two days, you have volume, but also you have intensity. So you could gauge, you know, those workouts, you know, in terms of how much intensity you could also then crank up a bit uh, to to provide you with you know adequate stimulus. You yeah. could also you could also do like a mod like none of the programs are written specifically like this. But here's where I would potentially modify for a client like yours. So maybe you do have those two workout sessions and maybe the intensity is really low and it's pretty easy. Uh, so then maybe one of those days we also practice squats 
we don't go really heavy, but since our goal is to get better at the squat and you want to increase it, maybe we have you and I have a technique day. So I'm following MAPS Anabolic to, to a T two days a week, but then if it's one of those weeks where it felt like, oh, those routines were really easy, it didn't feel like it taxed my body at all. Put 65 pounds on the bar that's and practice right. squatting. That's right. Do five sets of you know real light weight and just work on you know your, your feet gripping the floor and your posture and coming out of the hole and just technique stuff. So that will benefit you getting stronger in the squat by itself. So you And just use that based off of how you feel from the other routines. Got it. And should I keep my, I, I listed like the amount of calories and grams of protein that I'm currently eating. Should I change anything diet wise? Uh, I don't see that in the question, but um, how many grams of protein are you eating a day and what's your body weight? So I weigh between 97 and hundred pounds. Um, and I eat between 90 to 110 grams of protein each day. Well, damn, and you're calories. squatting 150. Yeah, that's good. Wow. <laughs> what is your, that's impressive. You're really strong. What is your, what do your total calories look like? Uh, between it, it depends. Like I would say 1600 to 1800, but usually like in the middle of that. Okay. Pretty, pretty that, good calories. Yeah. That's not bad. I mean, you could try bumping your calories a little bit, um, to see if that helps. Uh, you're pretty lean. Are you, are you trying to get leaner? Or are you okay with that? You just want to get stronger. Yeah, I'm okay with where I am. I'm just like set on the 200 pounds. Oh, dude, mm -hmm. bump, bump your calories a little bit too. Yeah. Throw 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 your calories. See if you can hit like closer to 1800 more consistently, and in combination with what we just said, that that should be a nice winning formula for increased strength. Got it. We'll do. All right. Well, thanks for calling in, Alexis. And if you don't have Maps Anabolic, we'll send that over to you. Oh, yes, I don't. I really appreciate that. Nope, no problem. Awesome. Good, good luck with school, huh? Yep. Thank you so much. No problem. Thanks, guys. Yeah, the, uh, it, it's always challenging when, you know, you're doing so much volume and it's challenging to cut it down because the mentality is always, well, if I do less, that means I'm going to yeah. get less results. Oftentimes, it's the opposite. You do less and you get better results. I know it sounds crazy, but uh, I, I would say eight out of ten times with very consistent people who work out all the time, that that's the direction they need to go. Well, when you have a specific goal like this too, where you want to get stronger specifically at the squat, there's other things that we can do that's not a full workout too. I mean, she can do things. You can add to those calisthenic days that are that are probably lower to moderate intensity days yeah. for her mm -hmm. and just practice squatting or doing using prime and working on mobility stuff if she has any things going on yeah. with that. Like there's, we always look at like training as like this, like, you know, this 50, 60 minute window of like these intense lifts all the time. But it's like, there's a lot of things yep. when, when you have goals like this that you can do to complement your training without, you know, taxing the body so much. Totally. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here or you can find other clips over here. And be sure to subscribe.